Part of that movie was when James getting on Macy up. How, how many hit songs you came out with? How many hit records you got? <laughs> James Brown, I mean, get on up the James Brown biopic. Man, come on. Classic. It's just one thing that I didn't, it's not that I don't like, it's, it's more about the director uh, and the way that he told the story. I like how it, it was done in a typical format you know how they looking in the mirror in some dressing room and then they they go back and reflect on their life I'm just sick of that it's like it, you didn't have to do all that we we know that you want to show and just show your range of, of as a director but that's been done so much it's like so many different ways you could do it than to do it that way the long walk down the hallway to look in the dressing room bam we back to childhood it's like, come on, show, show more depth. Um, as far as the story, though, it's epic. Epic. James Brown's story is so vast, though. I think they kind of took it mild as far as on the on the thresholds. They didn't want to, they got, they kind of like nipped the surface of the darkness of James when he started to, to descend and what made him descend. They kind of glossed over it and just made it like a one word reference to it. And it was it was mostly focused on the greatness of James. And James Brown is in every artist, even today. And that's the truth. James Brown is everywhere. From Chris Brown, if you like Chris Brown, Breezy, that's James Brown. Michael Jackson, James Brown, Prince, James Brown. All of that, the funk. Anybody doing that is James Brown. You see James. Every time they get up and do those moves, that's James Brown, man. So, I'm going to tell you, just Chadwick uh, Bossman, Oscar should be right there. He played James Brown better than he played Jackie Robinson. I mean, when I was watching him, I was thinking James. He had all the mannerisms down, uh every little quirk quirk uh, that James does he had James was bad man there's it, only gonna be one James Brown now I didn't like the flip flopping and, and like going saying this part and they cut and they go to another scene and they cut and go to another scene from another time you can get confused in all of this if you're not, like, say you went to the bathroom, came back, you don't know if they followed up on one scene or they came back to it, or... I just don't like that kind of directive. No, I really don't. I just... Just tell the story to me. You know, I mean, like, like Ray, they kind of did similar to that. It was just done a lot better. But overall, the actors, performances, Dan Aykroyd... Who a lot of people didn't know had a lot of experiences with James Brown. Um, he's in the Doctor Detroit movie. James Brown has a cameo in there with Dan Aykroyd plays Doctor Detroit. They have a great dance scene with uh, James Brown doing Get Up Off of That Thing, like a remix to it just for the Doctor Detroit movie. So, I mean, for him to play the promoter slash manager for James Brown when James first got started. I mean, that said a lot, you know, that really did say a lot, and the fact that him and Bobby was very close, but let me go into the reason why I don't do really movie reviews anymore, uh, and it's because I didn't want to support the agenda that the films were sending out, especially about us, uh, it's just that we're not getting our proper due in films. You know, they do a film like uh, in New York City and you see like there's no people of color around unless they're driving a cab or, you know, it's typical, stereotypical. We're either the comic relief, we're either the drug dealer, we're either the criminal, but in reality we're educators, we're police officers, we are 
everything that you guys are. We educators, you know, so I just don't understand the need to push a certain agenda. You know, we're not all homosexuals. We're not all trying to kill people. We're not all ignorant. <laughs> you know, we we actually do the same things that everyone else does. And New York is like the biggest gumbo pot of all nationalities. But yet, when you watch movies, Sex in the City, nothing but white people walking around. But when they have like a point three percent African American in movies, why does that character need to be gay? Like, what made this character gay, and what made you give the point three percent character in the movie to the black person, and he has to be gay? The character. You know, I've I've had actors tell me. African American actors told me that they turned down so many roles because they say, oh yeah, and in this role, at this point, the character admits that he really was gay. And they say, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't do that. Because that's, it makes no sense with what's going on in the story. It just ruined his whole character. And then they just be, okay, fine, we'll get someone else. Until they find the Negro that's going to play that role. And that's sad. If that's what's really going on in Hollywood, then that's sad. Because you look at what's going on in film, because they want to make it like, well, you don't make any money. That's that's the reason why. And the major um, market companies who, who will tell you that, oh, well, we can't push your movie overseas. Because what's, ra what's happening is, you see the films that are very successful, they're doing about another hundred million overseas or 60, 70, 80 they got major release overseas and the Euro companies and the companies will tell you oh well it's just that they don't watch black films over there they're not really into them and see this is the power of social media you take someone like Kevin Hart who's smart enough not to believe stupid people in the big offices him and his four man team basically went on social media since Laugh At My Pain and before that and been crushing on social media. So they have fans in Europe, they have fans in Australia, the UK, all throughout the world they have fans. And those fans are saying we want to see Kevin Hart. We love Kevin Hart. We want this, we want that. And then you show those to the executives and what they're going to say is well that doesn't translate over the dollars and this and that. So what Kevin Hart did was basically put up his own money just to do a tour to do some shows overseas. And what he was doing was going out there showing the fans that, hey, we got love for you and this and that. You can see me, I'm real. And what that does is when you do a limited release, a small release, those people want to come out and see Kevin Hart. They want to see what the buzz is about. They want to be a part of it. See, and that's why his movies are doing 160 million, and they do a limited release. Pretty soon, they're gonna want to open up more releases overseas. See, that shows you that there is money to be made overseas, and there's no such thing as a black film. Would you call Avengers a white film? No, they wouldn't do that. The white film Avengers, even though you basically could call it a white film. I mean, everybody running around was basically all white. So, from that aspect, I mean, I guess you could call it a white film, but they, they marginalize us and call it black film. Even though there's a white director, white, <laughs> white producers that's getting paid, it's a black film. You see? <laughs> it's that misdirection, buddy. They're getting the points. They're getting all the money. Man. Okay. It's a, it's a black film. <laughs> so, they don't want you to tap into that market. Says we know how to promote ourselves. Kevin Hart know how to promote himself. Other people know how to promote themselves. Just like James Brown had to promote himself. And it showed how we did. He was got laid with the hardest working man in show business based off that notion. Because he knew we already knew how to get over payola. Because we never we already understood that the white man playing for us in the music industry or any other industry didn't look in our favor anyway so we already had to work through the system or work around the system anyway 
<laughs> so for us to beat payola was like are you kidding we can get directly to the people because we know how to do it we were together then you see now we're like this everybody spread it out so it's a little harder to do but social media helps you bring synergy if you know what you're doing if you ain't all on world star and all hip-hop and all that other crap 